Hello. Uh, I can't hear you for some reason. Can you hear me now? Yeah, there you go. It would help if I turned the mic on. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I just resent an email to Shane with a direct link. I don't know why the invite part of Google Hangouts wasn't working, but he should be coming on soon. Okay. Yeah, I was I was chatting with him a minute ago. Okay. So. All right. So I'm I'm Alicia or Hero Job Shy, and you're Mason. Yeah, Mason Molino. All right. That's, somebody's calling me here, I think, or maybe that's you. It could be me. I'm not sure. I, I've this is the first time me running a Google Hangout. I've only only participated, so oh, okay. this is completely different. Yeah, it's it's cool. Yeah. I don't use Google Hangout very much, so. Um, it's, I find it interesting. I prefer Skype, but yeah. because uh, Google Hangout is free, a lot more people use it, but it, it doesn't have the same um, quality that Skype does. Plus, not, every, not as many people can um, chat or hang on with Skype versus Google Hangout. Oh, really? I didn't yeah. mean that. Okay. Well, uh, before Shane comes on, Mason, maybe you can just... Oh, here he is. Hello. Hello, Shane. It's Alicia here at Job Shive. Thank you for joining us. We got Mason on board. I'm sorry on my end. I thought I was doing everything right, but apparently, no. <laughs> <laughs> apparently That's not. Right. We're now. Okay. Well, why don't we start off by uh, each of you just telling um, a little bit about yourself and how you thought of this idea of you know gaming and Dogecoin. Um, do you want to start, Shane, or go ahead Mason? first, since I just got in. Okay, yeah. So uh, we're both part of a business incubator in Kansas City. Okay. And um, we kind of went around the circle, and everybody kind of said, you know, what they did. And that was, like, the first time we met. And, mm -hmm. like, right away, uh, we could tell that we were probably going to work together on something. And so we got together and talked about it. And uh, Shane pretty much had the idea, uh, idea to get... Um, the Dogecoin community involved, and he's kind of a, a bigger player over there. I, I'm pretty new to all that, so. Okay. So what is the Kansas, Kansas City Incubator, just so uh, anybody out there might want to know a bit more about that or help support that? Yeah, it's, uh, it's about no, a I'll year. I'll take that one. Oh, sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll give it a shot. Yeah, uh, so the incubator is called Beta Blocks. Um, okay. It's in Kansas City. It's a startup incubator where um, I think every three months new startups per uh, try to compete to get in and I think around 10 get in every three to six months. I don't remember exactly. And so um, Mason and his team and, and myself, we got in back in July. And so we have like a batch of 10 that we've been working with and learning with through mentorships and we get a working space. Uh, we get access to uh, demo day and investors. Um, depending on where we are in our startup. So it's really just trying to get us off the ground and teach us as much as we can so that we can be better prepared. Okay, and is this like where you, as the, a mentorship program, this is where you kind of step up to a bigger level of donorships, or I don't know if you say donorships, but uh, investors? Is it like a yeah, if, if that's the route we need to go, then that's, that's what we can get. Um, but really it's some of us, you know, um, we're just in different stages. Uh, some of us are making revenue, some of us aren't, you know, we're trying to learn. So it, it's all different places, but learning how to get, um, you know, investing your investors, and that's part of the process, too. Okay. And from the two of you meeting together, you did you form the high school eSport league, or did you have another project that you guys started on? Uh, no, the high school eSports league was uh, done by me and my team. Um, okay. About a year before we entered Beta Blocks, so uh, Doge Doge for esports was really the thing that came out of uh, Shane and our relationship. Okay. From, and from yeah. So I joined um, as a CoinPlay.io. You know, we sell uh, video games and PC games. Uh, activate on Steam. Um, mm -hmm. And since you know I did video games, uh, we accept Dogecoin. And Mason was 
in high school esports. I thought, you know, I do video games, I do cryptocurrency, he's in esports. I feel like this is a pretty good uh, marriage to, you know, make a project, and we kind of just went from there. Okay. Yeah. So, Mason, when you originally started the high school esport league, was it basically just based in the Kansas City area, or did you always have, like, a kind of global ambition? Um, yeah, there's always been that, that national or global uh, goal. Mm -hmm. But um, the idea has changed so many times. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just you kind of have to, to get the right fit. But, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's, so the first, the first season was... Uh, our summer open, and that was kind of like a test. And we ended up getting about 20 teams, which was more than we expected. Mm -hmm. And they were from um, all over North America. We had uh, a couple in Canada and one from um, Mexico. Really? Wow. Yeah. So that's a very broad scope. I mean, with the Internet, you can just almost be from anywhere and anywhere. Yeah. Um, but how was like just building the high school teams and working with this, the school districts? Was that a, in any way a hurdle? Or are these considered clubs? Or are these officially sanctioned? Um, yeah, so they're not officially sanctioned through the schools yet. Um, some of the teams do have sponsors that are teachers uh, mm -hmm. that actually act as coaches and managers for them. Mm -hmm. So they'll practice and run through strategies and stuff like that, like any normal uh, traditional sport would. Oh, OK. Well, that's, that's more than I have ever thought about. I mean, I thought of this as a club, but think of it as a, a sports activity or a team that's, that's unique, that's different. And from yeah. and from the team up with the uh, Doge for Esports, how has that expanded your already existing program? Yeah, so when that happened, um, we just kind of got the Dogecoin community um, behind us, mm -hmm. and they all loved it and accepted us, and they're they're awesome. Um, and so that just allowed us to get our voice uh, to a, a, much, a much larger audience. So there was uh, a lot more teams that signed up uh, for the fall semester. Okay. And are there going to be any returning teams for the spring? Have you already seen that yeah. happen? Yeah, totally. Uh, the two winners, the two champions for the varsity and junior varsity divisions have mm -hmm. already signed back up. And we just recently opened signups um, I want to say a week and a half ago, and we already have uh, 49 teams. That's it's not like double what you guys had last fall. Uh, in in the fall we had 52. 52. Uh, okay. Yeah, but we still have about a month and a half left to um, get more more signups going. Okay. Well, when I looked it's at your. There's time your... to actually double it then. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, we're looking to. We're, our goal is 100. Um, okay. And we also added another game in too, so that helps. Well, I saw that that you added Dota to the to the game, so yeah. there's gonna be basically two different almost leagues going on. Yeah, at yeah. At yeah. the same time. Now I know that you uh, streamed on Twitch, and I watched a lot of the matches on Twitch, and you had um, casters that yeah. were uh, casting the game for you guys. Um, have you had any response from the Twitch community now that Dogecoin is on there, or? Um. Well. Twitch is hard. <laughs> yes. Uh, unfortunately, it's it's just uh, we didn't really have like a huge um, following on Twitch, mm -hmm. so it was hard to get viewers. And it's there's just a lot of things going on, uh, like worlds and LCS and stuff mm -hmm. that that was going on at the same time. So it was uh, we we're kind of fighting for airtime, and yeah, so that was kind of a, a hurdle that we're going to have to figure out how to. Uh, get past this next semester. Mm -hmm. Well, I know there was like the League of Championships. There was like a lot of championship games towards the end of the year. Do you think yeah. now that you're in the spring, that is there a dead space where there, you might get more attention? Um, well, <laughs> the LCS runs uh, pretty much year-round, so it's yes. going uh, to be hard still. I think we'll probably end up moving to Sunday if we're going to stream. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that should make it a lot better. Okay. as far as viewership goes. But as far as um, the students that participate, I mean, how is their response about entering this league and being and receiving Dogecoin? I mean, have you gotten a great response back from them, or are they still like, uh, I'm not sure what this is? <laughs> um, uh, specifically about the Dogecoin, um, mm -hmm. we've had a few teams uh, um, really can't believe that they just got paid to play a video game, you know, so it kind of makes them feel like 
like they're <laughs> pros, you know. So that's it's it's oh. a huge boost in in confidence and and legitimacy for you know esports in their minds and especially their parents too. Because <laughs> oh, they got so, a little money, and it's not. Yeah, just... yeah, yeah. They've been buying. Um, I don't know if if they've got anything from CoinPlay, but um, they did tell us they got some gift cards and. No, it's it's fifty euros. Sure. What's that? You know, I've been I've been curious about that as well. Since ever since uh, we handed off, uh, so Cryptive is the one that sponsored um, the event, as as well as several other sponsors like Shive Mint, uh, Dogecoin Ball, and SoChain. Mm -hmm. But uh, Cryptive is the one that actually did the send to all the students, and that was, so that was like seven point six million, or, uh, something around there, Dogecoin. And I've been, you know, ever since the send, like I haven't really tracked it because I mean you can't you know follow like two hundred kids and see what they're doing with their money mm -hmm. um, but it's nice to hear that some of them are actually excited about it because that's that was the whole goal to begin with to get as much Dogecoin out there to a younger generation mm -hmm. uh, to see what kind of impact they would have on you know the Doge economy or or to see if there'd be any more buzz beyond that but it's good to hear that they're some of them are actually spending it and, and are excited about it well I, I was thinking you know since this since this is you're on Twitch and this is gaming, have they anyone said they use it for their subscription service or any upgrades for through Twitch or done other other things for gaming? Or? Um, yeah, I really actually haven't heard too much on what they're spending it on, so mm -hmm. I I really don't don't know that. Okay. Now you've already mentioned that Cryptiv um, is sponsoring where has sponsored the fall. Are they sponsoring this the Spring League? Or are you guys getting more sponsors? Um, yeah, we haven't actually uh, been pursuing that yet. Mm -hmm. We'll probably start doing that um, here in three or so weeks when we get a little closer. Yeah, we haven't discussed anything regarding Doge for Esports, so that was kind of its own little thing, and mm -hmm. so that was just a combination of, of our efforts. Um, if there is any Doge for Esports to come next, I mean, it would really have to come from the community to mm -hmm. see if they, yeah. they want something like that. They want to re-engage and, and support this spring. Okay. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. But as far as the the high school es esports league, I mean, you guys are your goal is 100 teams. Um, are you looking to engage further, or I mean, what is the the end goal for you guys? Engage in uh, like, Doge are you coin? guys going to expand? Well, not as just Dogecoin, but just the gaming community in general. Are you guys going to have like? I know there's other high school esport leagues out there. Would you pit your champion against their champion, or? Oh, um, yeah, that had crossed our mind before, um, mm -hmm. and I actually know. Uh, the guys over um, at the other league. Um, I don't know. I might. I might do that. We'll we'll have to think about it. Okay. And that you guys? Be, that'd be an interesting Twitch match to stream for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, besides I, the high school East Sports League, um, do you guys have any other incubator projects that you're working on, or is this you're putting all your full effort here? Yeah, unfortunately, there's just between working part time and doing this, mm -hmm. um, it's there's just not enough time <laughs> mm -hmm. for me at least. Shane, Shane somehow, I don't know how he did CoinPlay and Doge for Esports. He's a <laughs> he's a beast. <laughs> well, Shane, talk a little bit uh, more. Well, I mean, you know, I just love the the Dogecoin community, so it's it's hard not to want to do something or or you know. <laughs> I mean, I, I want more stuff to happen in the community, so it was just a passion. A passion for you? Okay. Yeah. Well, how uh, is coin your business with CoinPlay, how is that going for you guys? How many, I mean, with Stream and Xbox Live accepting Bitcoin, and there's there seems to be a lot more gaming options for people now than well, I would say our, like our a year ago. Only, yeah, our space is only PC games, but th there's definitely opportunities out there. Um, mm -hmm. If... The the problem with uh, you know trying to sell Xbox games and all that stuff is we only do you know digital distribution. So if mm -hmm. um, other things like uh, Xbox or PSN were able you were able to have like third party resellers, then, mm -hmm. then we could do that. But for us, we're just selling you know um, Steam games, and that requires us to reach out to developers, um, work with them to be able to sell their games. So every every game we sell is is with the permission of a developer, and we have to. Uh, create contracts with them, um, mm -hmm. so it's it's more of a, a slow process to make sure, like we've got everything uh, correct and and we're we've got the right partners and and we're selling the games, and so it's you know for us we started back in July um, we our site was down a lot until November so November is really when we came back and and now it's just trying to collect data to see where we go from there. 
Was the the down, was it a result of DODS attacks? I know that happens a lot with cryptocurrency businesses, or was it just your, the impact of this, you just didn't have a server space, or...? No, it's it's honestly it's, it's just my myself and one other partner who's working on it, and I mean we've got full time jobs. We we both have families, and so it was just hard getting together and pushing it all out and getting making sure it was what we wanted to be. Because when it comes to crypto, you have to, um, I guess go overboard with security or at least yes. try to prove that. I mean, <laughs> it's it's a it's a zero trust society. So, mm-hmm. um, I mean now we accept credit cards, and so we're 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 more of a legitimate competitor to, uh, you know, other street or Steam resellers. Mm-hmm. Um, but crypto is, was where we started, and so we want to continue that. Um, and so a lot of that was making sure we had it all correct, and I picked up a few more partners since then, um, helping with various aspects of the business. So you'll probably see a lot more of us in, you know, 2015 than you did in 2014. Okay. Well, I do have a question. You said you, with the whole licensing and making sure you have permission to, to sell the digital content, have you reached out to any, any developer games as a means of maybe premiering on your site or development? Is that an ambition of yours? Well, that, that would be an entirely different business if we, if we wanted to do development of games. Um, it's mm-hmm. not something I, I would you know, shy away from, but um, the reason we have to work with developers mm-hmm. is... Licensing is just kind of a, a very messy sort of environment, mm-hmm. and if we were to sell games um, from a developer and it wasn't authorized, uh, you know, if, if it wasn't with their permission, we could actually get someone's account like uh, banned from Steam, and yes. so it really has to be from a developer um, to make that legitimate. And so there are plenty of you know resellers out there who who don't go that route, mm-hmm. uh, but that's just not something we want to do, especially when we accept crypto. It has to be legitimate from every side we can. Mm-hmm. And what do you see? As you said, you're going to see we're going to see more of you in 2015. Are there any big pushouts or marketing pushouts or any big huge plans? Well, you know, I I think when we first started, everything was a big plan, mm-hmm. and what we're learning is it's it's actually a bunch of small plans just that just kind of come together <laughs> and makes me laughing because I think you know he like a lot of the startups kind of learned this lesson because when you first get into businesses. You think, you know, I've got this idea, it's going to be amazing, mm-hmm. and as you get going, really, you just you just get a lot of little lessons or big lessons that you think you can do big, but really, there's a lot of people who've done it before you that just kind of know what's going on, and, and just because yeah. you have an idea doesn't mean it's actually worth anything. Um, so 2015, really, for us, is we've learned a lot in 2014, um, mm-hmm. what to push out, what, what customers want, what they don't want, and so in 2015, we're just working hard to take that feedback and make a better product. And so well, I, I think, yeah. Okay. Well, I have a question for both of you, since you guys are in the startup area. Is there one little lesson or one big lesson that you had learned where you thought this was going to work and then reality hit you? Um. Uh, it's, it's all about, to me, mm-hmm. persistence. And that's one thing that they pump into you. It's, it's not a... It's not a sprint; it's a marathon, and you just have to keep going. And that's there's a, it's a roller coaster of emotion. <laughs> mm-hmm. You get mad, you get depressed, um, but there's also those those wins, and you have to like celebrate the small wins. You know that 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 to me is the most important thing. I think one of the the biggest lessons I've learned, and it's not I learned it; it just became apparent over time. One of the the first things I remember, um, Wes Bergman, he's the lead investor at Betablocks. One of the lessons he said um, was that your relationships will change, like with your with your friends and family. And mm-hmm. it isn't because uh, any w- w- what it is is you know as you're working on this, no one really understands why you're working on it. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> for a lot of us, we're not going to be making money for a while. It's it's it is a, a huge time investment, and it's something you're passionate about. Mm-hmm. And so um, you know you can go have a career, which I, I have a daytime job as well, mm-hmm. um, but I work on this at night and, and as much as I can over the weekends because it's important to me. And th- at a certain point, I realized, you know, a, a lot of friends of mine, they don't they do not do something like this, and they wouldn't understand why I do it because, um, you know, time is, is very, very valuable. And so how I spend my time is is very different from a lot of people I know now, except for, you know, the people in the startup incubator. Like, I have a much closer relationship with them in probably the last six months and I do a lot of people over, you know, 
I've known her for decades, and it's because mm-hmm. we all reprioritized what's important to us in a very short amount of time. Mm-hmm. Do you want to add anything to that, Mason, about relationships or? Oh no, it's definitely true. Uh, they just, just people don't understand. They think you're crazy, and it's uh, you just have to kind of take it as it is and keep going. So I, I personally, for me, because I. Um, I started the podcasting, and there's still people out there that don't even know what that is, even in 2014. No. Um, but have this passion to do this this show, and even from friends and family, they just they just don't understand. They don't they don't get it. It's like you just talk in your microphone and you send this content out for free. I mean, yeah. how are you gonna make money? And I'm like, that's not the point. <laughs> Maybe it will happen. Maybe I will make money. You know, that is a goal. <laughs> but right now, it's just building your brand, building your relationships, networking. Yep. Well, I have a. No, that's, that's exactly correct. I mean, if, if it's something you're passionate about, that, that's very what you have to do. You have to take the long view and work hard, and eventually you'll get there. <laughs> eventually, yes. Eventually. <laughs> well, uh, Mason, I have a question for you. As someone who you stated that it was through Shane that got you into the, the sense of cryptocurrency, I mean, what did you think about Dogecoin or the cryptocurrency in general? Did you know anything about it before engaging? Yeah, so I knew about it. Uh, I knew that it was there, mm-hmm. but I had no idea how it worked. And through many conversations with Shane, <laughs> um, of him explaining and re-explaining, uh, it all started to make sense. And uh, yeah, it's 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 great. I uh, have a new respect for for especially Dogecoin, but mm-hmm. um, yeah, the whole crypto uh, group. And what about you, Shane? How did you get engaged with Dogecoin or cryptocurrencies in general? Did we lose Shane? Did lose okay, him? yeah, for me, um, it started actually back in December, um, late mm-hmm. December. A buddy of mine um, was telling me about altcoins. And so before that, I knew a little bit about Bitcoin. A friend of mine had done some mining in like 2011. And so, which which is a good time to mine Bitcoin. Um, yeah. <laughs> but but in December, you know, I, I I got to a point where I was like, I just want one Bitcoin. You know, I don't know where this is gonna go. Um, I knew you could buy fractions of Bitcoins, but I I just want one. And it wasn't. Uh, it was right after a crash. Um, I mean, it was it was close to twelve hundred. And one morning, I woke up and it was like four hundred bucks. And I was like, okay, this is my chance to say I have one. Put in cold storage and just walk away from it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I bought one, and then then my buddy told me about altcoins, and you know like what he listed was Feathercoin, Litecoin, and Dogecoin. Mm-hmm. Um, and what happened was Dogecoin was the one that really stuck out, and and it was because of the community. I, I joined all the subreddits for each of them, and Dogecoin was the one that was just rising meteorically. You know, of of all the other ones, um, it wasn't too long before it surpassed Litecoins. Uh, subreddit user base, <laughs> yes. and then it was, it was skyrocketing from there, and 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 I just couldn't get away from it. It was it was probably the most fun I've had on Reddit in a long time, and that's how I got into it. Okay, well, may I ask you, do you guys, since you are into gaming and you've built this startup company and you're in the in the technical field, um, are you guys software guys? Are you more hardware guys? Are you kind of a combination of both? Uh, my background is actually in uh, uh, film. <laughs> really? So, yeah. <laughs> so how did you take a left left field into gaming? Uh, it's just always been a passion of mine. I mean, mm-hmm. growing up, um, gaming was kind of like my escape. And I know that's uh, the same for a lot of people. But, yeah, so that's how I... I mean, just I played World of Warcraft uh, religiously. and <laughs> You know, I was a huge nerd. In, in high school, so yeah, for me, um, I'm, yeah. my day job, I'm an accountant, so that's probably as far from from gaming as you can get. But like most kids, I mean, like Mason, I grew up with games. Um, I think like I can remember as far back as playing Muds, uh, those text-based games, multi-user yes. level dungeons. Um, and I, I mean, I I played WoW as well, Nashron's Call, and, and Quake Two, and a lot of those games. I I did a uh, a clan for Quake 2 or Action Quake 2 when I was like 16 um, and so gaming's just always been part of my life and, and I've been fortunate enough that I'm able to like go back into it now but in like a different angle mm-hmm. 
Well, what was what would you say be the the first game that you played that you knew that this is this is your thing? Was there like a? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then. Yeah, it was definitely um, uh, Warcraft: Tides of Darkness, Warcraft Two. Okay. Uh, I played that uh, more than any game I had previously, and that that just I mean I played all day mm-hmm. for weeks and weeks, and that's just kind of how. Um, every game after that that I got hooked on, that's just kind of how it went. So you're like a marathon gamer. You you keep as soon as the game comes in, you play until you finish it, or <laughs> no, just play over and over, even if it's the same thing. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. Okay. yeah, that was man. I was maybe fifth grade when that was. <laughs> so. Yeah, and that's that's the same with everything after that. And I've been kind of stuck on League of Legends um, for the past four years, <laughs> so I haven't really expanded much past that. So. Mm-hmm. And what about you, Shane? Uh, for me, it first started when I was introduced to, um, I think it was Command and & Conquer and Red Alert. <laughs> I mean, this is this a long time ago. The first time I ever played... Was probably at a, like a friend's house when I, I can't even remember how old I was. And, Did you do LAN parties? Uh, well, even, even before LAN parties, we we were connecting over the modems. Um, so mm-hmm. that was like 14 4 k connections. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, that, that is so hard to do. I've done that before, and I couldn't do it because the 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 connection would just cut off so often. You're no, like in the middle of engagement. <laughs> it's pretty awful. I I had yeah. a um a telephone cable from you know my mom's kitchen all the way down to the basement. So that I could play a game, and we would build up like huge armies, and it was always cut out when we start the battle, just because there's so many units on the screen. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, but but real time strategy is probably where I go to most. Uh, like Warcraft and Starcraft is, mm-hmm. is a lot of games that I play. Um, Civ Five, I love that. But yeah, that's that's where I game a lot of real time strategies and uh, <laughs> strategy strategies as well. <laughs> And from the from there, obviously, you took your passion to start your own business. But um, as far as the building your business aspect, I mean, did you have to learn how to code? Did you already know how to do that, guys, or did you have to bring somebody in for you? Well, I'd say I'm I'm, I'm a generalist in a lot of things. I'm I'm not brilliant in any one thing, and mm-hmm. I think a lot of um, I'm, I'm I'm fortunate enough to have worked in a lot of different places and know a lot of people. Um, that I have kind of like a, a breadth of knowledge. So mm-hmm. when we first started CoinPlay, um, my buddy Andy, he he was full time. He's not full time anymore just because he's he's too busy. Um, but he's the coder. Uh, so he he's done coding ever since he was like a kid. And uh, my dad's a businessman, so I've, it's I've always been kind of around it. And mm-hmm. luckily, since I'm an accountant, I I have kind of the administrative side under my belt. And so we mm-hmm. we kind of put that together to to create a business. And and gaming and cryptocurrency was just part of what we wanted to do. What about you, Mason? Um, well, I took a few computer science courses, uh, but I don't remember anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but fortunately, I don't, there's no, uh, I don't have to code, there's no requirement for that, for what we do. Okay. So. Well, um, we still have a few time. Is it? Is there anything, um, you want to convey to the audience or want people to know about the high school eSport League or CoinPlay, how to find you guys, um, where they can connect, if they want to sponsor, you know, what to look for, how to find you? Yeah, uh, uh, just on Facebook or we have uh, email, just admin at hsel.org um, if, if you want to, if you have any questions or want to talk or anything like that. Um, our signups are open until March 1st, so if you're a high school kid or you know a high school kid, uh, sign up. And uh, thanks to the Dogecoin community for being so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and what about you, Shane, for CoinPlay? Um, with CoinPlay, I mean, just, you know, if you've got a second, visit our site. It's just coinplay.io. Um, we've got a pretty fun Facebook page. Um, you can just search us, coinplay.io, and... We've got about 11,000 people following us, and we just post memes and, and do all the silliness that, that's kind of come from the Dogecoin community. Um, that's been part of who we are. 
Um, and any developers who might be listening, if you've got a game on Steam and you want to sell for Bitcoin, Litecoin, or Dogecoin, um, you can just hit us up at dev, D-E-V, D-E-V at coinplay.io, and we'll definitely sell your game. We'd love to do it. Okay. Well, I would really like to thank you guys for, for coming and doing this and being very patient with me <laughs> for the <laughs> for this. Um, I will have the audio equivalent of this um, on my show, the Music of the Shy podcast, but I will um, hit you guys back up on the email to make sure that when people view this on the YouTube, they have all your contact information and the right information. Um, is there anything else you wanted to convey or anything like that at this time? or? No, thanks. Thanks for having us, and I, you know, I really appreciate the opportunity. And to the moon. To the moon. Yeah. yeah thanks a lot. Appreciate it. All right. Well, that was Mason and Shane. Um, Shane has coin, coin play, and uh, Mason is directing the high school esports league, which is having a spring league coming up. So again, like if you have a high school student, you know, a high school student that is into gaming is a way to engage and gather their friends and have a good time. Uh, they are doing sign-ups for the spring matches in 2000 for this year for 2015. And Shane again has its Steam games going on for sale. For so if you have, you want to buy some games, have some fun, do something for the Deutsch community, hit up Coin Coinplay IO. I will clean that up. I swear. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, thank you very much again. I'm gonna hit you up on the email to make sure I have all the correct information so I can put it in the about about there in the comments so people can properly engage you guys, okay? All right. Sounds all right. good. All right, thank you so much and I hope you guys have a great day and to the moon everyone. Yeah. Thanks. To the moon. You're welcome. Oh yeah.